Hi, I'm Brian Crosby. I'm the director of themed entertainment for Marvel and the logo designer for the Marvel Defenders of the Diamond logo for the Salt Lake Bees. And today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to draw that logo yourselves. So when we uh, when we were concepting what the what the the Marvel version, the Defenders of the Diamond logo was going to be for uh, for the Salt Lake Bees, we started really with with learning the the attributes of, of the team, your colors, your mascot. We we love the bee mascot himself. So uh, you know we, we thought, what would it be cool if we just kind of took him, made him a little bit more super heroic, made him a little maybe a little edgier. And so uh, what we did. So we went through a series of a series of different sketches, um, and and we did we did various versions. One where he was kind of in a in a swinging position, and one where he was flying and doing different things. But we decided really to go more iconic and also lean into the kind of the honeycomb uh, beehive as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I how I illustrated that uh, that that bee head really. And so as I do with all of my when I'm drawing a character, whether it be Spider-Man or Captain America or whoever, I always start off with a basic circle. And I use I use these blue colored pencils um, for my underdrawing. And then what I'll do is once I kind of get the uh, the shape language that I want, then I'll go over the top of it with with darker ink or with darker pencils. So I always start off with that with that circle, and then I'll take that circle and divide it in half, just like that. And then I like to then I'm gonna I'm gonna draw a chin line him and so if I'm depending on on the character I'm doing the chin shape will change so if I'm doing if I'm doing the Hulk he'll be big and broad you know thick jaw if I'm doing a character like spider-man it's a little thinner um, for for the bee um, I wanted him to not look like an alien but look look more insect insect -like. and so after I draw that chin it's gonna be more pointed so it's definitely not human looking and then come take that center line and go all the way down. And then another, when I'm drawing a humanoid character, I also look for the eye line. Typically the eye line on a human head is kind of right in the middle. And I didn't want him to look like a human, so I, so I dropped it down just a, just a bit. So kind of below, uh, below eye line for what would be a human eye line. Just like that. So it instantly makes it a little, a little unusual and kind of gives them this, this bulbous head. And so I'll take that, and then, as you see, I, I kind of start to try and find the shapes that I'm looking for. So I make almost, almost like a, not like a baseball bat, really, really but I go all the way around, tighten that up. And you see, I start to kind of commit to the lines once I find what I'm looking for. And then I wanted to have some, some kind of tight cheekbones. So I take that same line and bring it in, just like that. And then really define that chin line a little bit more. So those little cheekbones, define the chin line, and then come down here to the chin. And then I really go to a point. You know, so it looks very insecty, but a little bit more aggressive. Okay, so then, left-handed problem. I smudge my drawings a lot. So I, I tend to work uh, very dirty with my, with my drawings. But when I'm doing the, uh, the eyes, the eyes are, eyes are big. I love the eyes that you already have on your existing logo. So it's kind of maybe, maybe inspired by Spider-Man a little bit, you know, in that same kind of insect, insect family. So I do these big, big eyes that are almost teardrop shaped. You want to make those even, but see, it comes to a point where that eye line is. Like that. Okay. And then to show its aggression, do a little eyebrow indentation right there. A little bit of expression. And then show a little bit of a, just a suggestion of eyelid underneath, like that. So you can see the head starts to really uh, take shape. Okay, but then so it doesn't look like an alien, you gotta add those cool antennas. So about halfway between the eye line and the top of the head, you can make a little little circle here. This is where we're gonna make the antennas. And so they they shoot up and out. It's a very dynamic. When we're drawing Marvel Comics, you know, we always try and keep things loose at this stage. So that it has that, that feeling of fluidity and movement. And so you see the uh, 
the antennas really kind of shoot out there. All right. So then we're going to take those and refine those lines just a bit. The angle towards where they bend and then we give it a little bit of a, I don't know what you call that, where it attaches to the, <laughs> attaches to the head right there. And do the same thing on the other side. A little bit of a skin fold, I guess you could say. Like that. All right, and then we're gonna finish those antennas so we go all the way out. And then come to a really aggressive point. Shape, language, and characters is important. You tend to get more aggression when you have points or uh, sharp edges. When things are round, like, like a Mickey Mouse type character, that's when they're more, a little bit more fluffy and happy that we want to be a bit more angular and aggressive. Kind of like that. Okay, so now that I have my underdrawing pretty much nailed down, so I can set aside that, and now we're gonna go for the, for the marker and really uh, solidify those lines. I'm gonna first do it with a thinner, the thinner Sharpie. And I'm gonna start on the right side because I'm left-handed. This is where you really commit to those, to those lines. Boom. I do sometimes also make sound effects when I, when I do my drawings. So there's that suggestion of, of eyelid. And when you're drawing digital, it's a lot easier to, to match side to side. But when you're drawing in pencil and paper, so you want to you know, really try your best to match what's on each, each side. And as we're doing these, we also, you know, when, when we're drawing, when we're doing comics, <clears throat> you know, we can get a lot, a lot of detail in. A lot of little cross hatching, and uh, you know, which are basically lines that go back and forth. You see that a lot on uh, on comic books. Um, when we were doing these, we had to avoid things like that, which we would traditionally do, because these had to work on on hats and jerseys, and they, so they had to um, they had to be stitched on. So we had to think a little bit differently. So this was a challenge for us at Marvel, which the whole thing, the whole Defenders of the Diamond program was an interesting challenge for us because we were no longer. Uh, really working with characters that we are familiar with. We are working with, with your characters, with, uh, with, with the bee. And so now that I got the eyes in, I'm gonna go ahead and do the, the, out, the outer portion of his head. Give him that great silhouette. You see him just going over the top of the lines that I, that I already that I already made. So you see, sometimes I switch back and forth from one marker to the next, um, depending on what I, what a effect I'm trying to achieve, whether it's an uh, outline or uh, small details. So a lot of the smaller details all go in with the, uh, the thinner, the thinner sharpie. So when we're doing the eyes, I like to leave a little highlight. Now, typically, when you're drawing a character, you think about well, you always think about where the the light source is. But because this is supposed to be inside of a baseball stadium light sources are all around you. So I did something a little different than what I would normally do with a character. I, I gave multiple uh, highlights on the eyes. So the highlights are on one side over here and one side over here. So they almost reflect each other. So then you come in and darken in those eyes. Even just making, making the eye solid black also uh, gives them a little bit of a little bit of attitude, which is fun. Always with drawing characters, you're supposed to be having fun. This is the fun at all. And I've been doing this all my life. <laughs> Just uh, 
sketching and drawing and always wanting my characters to look like they look in, in cartoons and the movies and things like that. So if you're, a, if you're a young artist, just practice, practice, practice all the time. Draw, draw your friends, draw your family, draw your mom, dad, sister, brother, dog, whatever. Um, point is to always just be drawing and you can have fun. Okay, so now we're gonna go in and we'll do these antennas here. So I'm gonna do these with thick outline because I want them to pop off of that, uh, the back of the head, just like that. And flip it around so we can get these. There we go, that, boom. Nice antenna, all right. Thicker, but that's okay because we're gonna go and we're gonna do a little bit of shadow work in here. So we're gonna even it out just like that. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my thin so I can get those those kind of skin folds on around the antenna. Okay, do a little bit of that shadow on the antenna in there. And with that, we have our Salt Lake Bee. So it's a, it's a relatively uh, easy character to put together, but I really think it's fun. I really think it's effective. And oh, and by the way, whenever you're doing a drawing, you always have to sign your name. That's what makes it yours. So I'm gonna put my name down at the bottom, Brian Crosby, just like that. And there you have it. Marvel's Defenders of the Diamond Salt Lake Bees logo.